grateful this morning come on Brickwood are you truly grateful this morning come on I'm looking at some blessed people this morning and I know that we are truly grateful so come on we ought to just lift our hands today and say God if you hadn't done anything else we are grateful here at the Greatwood Baptist Church come on let me hear you shout hallelujah come on let me hear you shout thank you Jesus come on let us go higher now in praise and worship come on Come on, stand all over the feet, on your feet. Here we go. How many know that we serve a mighty God? Come on, what a mighty uh, God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate our God on this morning. Anybody excited in this house? Anybody excited about the king this morning? Come on and lift up your voices in this house. Open up your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank him in this house. For we serve a mighty God. He's a mighty good friend. He's a mighty counselor. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hand, we go. Say Lord to mighty, Lord to mighty, say Lord to mighty, Lord to mighty, say Lord to mighty, 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 Lord to I said, Lord, to my last time. I said, Lord, to mine. I said, Lord, to mine. Lord, to mine. Everybody say, What a mighty Yeah. 
say, oh glory. I say, oh honor. I say, oh praise. Oh praise to the mind, to the mighty God we say. Come on, let's try that again. To the mighty. What a mighty. Come on. Angel. Come on, everybody, pump your fist in the air like this. Hey. We say, Lord, to mighty. I said, Lord, to mighty. I say, Lord, to mighty. I say, Lord, to mighty. I say, Lord. I say, Lord, to mighty. 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 Say, Lord, to my, say, Lord, to my, say, Lord, to my, say, Lord, to my, Lord, to my, Lord, to my, Lord, to my, say, Lord, to my, Lord, to my, Lord, to my, say, Lord, to my, say, Lord, to my. Say Lord to my, say Lord to my, see you've been so good, God. Say Lord to my, 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 Lord to my. Come on, last time. What a mighty God we serve. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, we in our summer morning. We still giving God praise. Angel. voices in this house. Come on Zion, lift your voices in this house. Begin to give God some praise in this house for what he's doing. Come on, we serve a, a God that does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask. Don't think, come on, clap your hands. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. How many know that he deserves all the glory and all the honor and all our praises? Hallelujah. He didn't see fit to let you go and just do anything. Hallelujah. He gave you an exit. He created an exit. So he deserves all our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands all over the place? Come on, begin to worship our God. Come on, begin to thank him all over the building. Come on, begin to thank him for all over the building. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Our hallelujah belongs to him. How many know that? How many believe that? Our hallelujah belongs to him. Our being belongs to him. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, y'all know it. My hallelujah, say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, Lord, 
My hallelujah belongs to Come on, let's say that again, guys. My hallelujah say My hallelujah belongs to Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. My hallelujah My hallelujah belongs Come on, I want everybody to begin to open up your mouth and say, You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve my praise, Lord. Come on, let's say it again. You deserve it. You deserve our worship, Jesus. You deserve the glory, Jesus. All of the glory say, all of the glory belongs to you. Come on, all the glory belongs to him. All of the glory say, all of the glory belongs to you. Yeah, all of the glory say, all of the glory Come on, everybody, open up your mouth. You deserve it. You deserve it. He deserves our praise. You deserve, you deserve our worship, Jesus. You deserve, you deserve it. You deserve the glory, Jesus. You deserve our
Bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship and magnify your name. For you are great. You the me. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We lift our hands in worship. We lift our hands in worship, hands in worship and magnify your name. For you are great. You the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Deserve it. You deserve it, oh God. You deserve it, oh God. You deserve it, oh God. Yeah. Cause all of the glory belongs to you. Come on and lift your hands in this house. Come on, thank you for His goodness. Come on, thank you for His mercy. Come on, thank him for his goodness. Come on, lift your voices in this house. Come on, open up your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Open up your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Come on, open up your mouth and say, we surrender all to you, Jesus. Good morning, Brentwood. Oh, do you feel the presence of God this morning? Did you enter into this place with thanksgiving? Did you enter into this place to praise? Hallelujah. This is a day that the Lord has made, and everybody in here should choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now that you are filled and engulfed with the Holy Spirit, we're going to enter into our prayer time. So I'm going to invite you to come down to the altar this morning, the sacred place of prayer. You can pray anywhere now, from your seat, your car, the corner. But the Bible says that the altar is a privileged place of prayer. It's a privileged place of thanksgiving. So we want to invite you to come down this morning. We want you to add to our sick list uh, Diana Wilbert. She is in Texas Children's Hospital. She is the granddaughter of Renee Mobley. So please keep her in your prayers. We have offering up our prayers and petitions this morning. Deacon Otis Patterson.
eternal God, our Father, it's once more and again that just a few thine weak and humble servants do come close to this altar. First, to say thank you. Heavenly Father, we have so much to be thankful for. every soul that is in this room, for everyone under the sound of my voice, either in this worship center, in the overflow, on the campus, they may be streaming from near or far. You have a reason to be here. For you've gone through this week. You've gone through trials and tribulations. But through it all, you remember that he's waiting for you. Now, what I'm about to say is not in the Bible, but Otis says, I just believe that when saints gather together, an altar appears. But we know that there is an altar at this place where we lay down our burdens. We don't all have the same ability to crowd around this physical altar. But for a saint, an altar is always there. It is a sacred place where we come to lay down our burdens and leave them there. We know that sacrifices were made at the altar. So we thank you that you've come. You have arrived at that place. Be careful because you are on holy ground. So it does not matter what your position is, your physical position. God looks at your heart and he knows that he speaks to you through your heart. His word says that out of your heart flows the issues of life. So God, we thank you that we've made that first step. Worked hard all week, went through hell to get here. But we made it. And so whatever reason that we came, we're going we to let our reason be known. We're going to cast our burdens all at the altar where the perfect sacrifice was laid. Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for having all of the power. We thank you for the very breath of life. We thank you for our existence that we made it from our early days, even until now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sun, the moon, and the stars. We thank you for Mother Nature and this old earth that has afforded us a home. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you for the struggles of life that you've seen us safely through. God, we thank you for leadership. We thank you for the shepherd of this flock. We thank you, God, for being a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We being a triune people, body, mind, and soul. And then, God, we thank you for the spirit that you placed in us. That when your spirit stirs up our spirit, we come running to a place where we know we can get help from nobody but the Lord. Thank you, God. We made it. We're here now to cast all our burdens right here. We thank you that you allow us to be good stewards of the gifts you've given us. The choir sing and stir up our spirit. And we see others who have similar situations as I was. I want to test your soul this morning. Just start to think about his goodness and all that he's already done for you. Your soul will get happy. You'll start running. you look at your hands and your hands will look new. you look at your feet and they will too. Oh, and when you open your eyes and look at your neighbor and they're crying and you wonder why thankful. They're grateful. They know the gift that God gives them through the Holy Spirit. Now, Heavenly Father, we pray that your Spirit move among us, move in us. Let something on the inside be shown on the outside. Let some sinner man, woman, boy, girl come running, asking what must I do to be saved. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Thank you for salvation. 
thank you, God. When we look at the issues all over the world, there seem to be trouble on every hand. We remember in your word, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Man would not adhere to sound counsel, but we know you have the whole world in your hand. Thank you, God. We want to thank you for this church called Brentwood that stood in this corner, and yet the people do come. As I looked out over this sea of people, I remember when God blessed the multitude, how he fed them, and they still had more to give. You're in the right place to receive a blessing. And while we are praying here, pray in your spirit that a word will come fresh from the speaker of the hour that we'll leave changed when our arms can't reach all the way around and our hands won't touch. He'll make the difference when your money runs out and you just need a little bit more. He'll make the difference. Yeah, when your friends are acting funny, he'll give you new friends. God, we have so much to thank you for. If I had 10,000 tongues, couldn't thank you enough. But if I start right now, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody owe him a praise. Somebody ought to call his name. It ought to be some running. In it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Out of all that we can thank you for, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the one who died on yonder's cross for the remission of our sins. As we ever look towards Calvary to the cross where he was slain on our behalf, Jesus said these words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And before we close, we do ask you for forgiveness, God, that you'll give us just one more chance. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But most of all, we thank God for Jesus because it's in his name that we pray. All who agree, say amen.
something happens when we call the name Jesus. Demons tremble at his name. When I call you, yeah, something happens. Yeah. Come on, Alto, help me say that. When I call, yeah. When I call you, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Yes, it does. When I call you, come on, Judas, help me say that part. When I call you, yeah. Sopranos, help me say that part. When I call you. When I call you, Jesus. When I call you, Jesus. Come on. Now break the music. Let us all lift our hands and say, when I call. Come on, you ought to lift it right there. When? When I call you. There's something about the name Jesus. The more I call them, the better I feel. When I call you, when I call you, Jesus, something happens at the name Jesus. Something happens, something. Anyone visiting Brentwood Baptist Church for the very first time, would you stand so that we may see who you are? Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Amen. So we welcome you to the Brentwood Baptist Church where Christ is. I know uh, that's right. When you receive that card, uh, you may be seated. We ask that you fill it out and place it in the offering plate as it goes by. You just saw a large group stand. I'm going to ask them to stand again. That, that is the youth department from the Mount Triumph uh, Baptist Church, Alexandria, Louisiana. The pastor is Randy Harris, and his wife, uh, Janelle, is here. Wave your hand so we see. Amen, amen. And they were invited by Deacon Dennis Brown. Where are you, Deacon Brown? <laughs> Outside, counting the money. Of course he is. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. You may be seated. So we're going to take this opportunity to fellowship. And I know you're sitting next to somebody you don't know. Amen? If you're not, then I'm going to need for you to get up and move and shake somebody's hand that you don't know. Amen?
clap our hands to give you the glory. And we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes. Come on, let me see you clap him again. We clap, come on. We. Watch out. Come on, man. Clap. Come on. Oh, 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 we sing our song. We sing our song. but I'm going to give everyone a chance to get back to their seats. I saw some of you go back there to the gated community. They let you in back there today, didn't they? Amen. 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 For our visitors, we pass the place twice here at the Brentwood Baptist Church. The first time is for our missions. That's everything that we do outside the walls of this church. And then the second time is for our tithes and offering, that which God has commanded us to do. Amen? Amen. So you were given this blue sheet when you walked in this morning. You will find our offertory reading. Let's read together. It's offering time. Lord, I thank you today for the ability and willingness to offer you my time, my talent, and my tent. I dare not come into your house empty-handed. I am standing on the promises of God. Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements this morning. We want to invite you to come out this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our midweek worship. Uh, Dr. Joe Ford will be teaching for the next three weeks on the topic, What Makes You Weak? Amen. I'll have be there right on the front row. Hallelujah. Sing for us, singing for us this Wednesday will be the voices of praise. So we want to... We want to invite you to come out and join us. The Making Great Men's Ministry will host its men's conference this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Lifelong Learning Center. The theme is Molding Great Minds with a focus on building character. The morning speaker is a great man of God who hails from Lumberton, North Carolina. And he's a graduate of Morehouse. Anybody know who that is? <laughs> That's Dr. Joe Samuel Radliff. <laughs> I thought that Lumberton would surely give it away. <laughs> if you have not purchased your tickets, please go by the table in the Grand Hall today. The cost uh, for adults is $30, and for youth ages 12 through 18, $20. Wives, mothers, aunts, grandmothers, sisters, we want to go by, want you to please go by and register for your men. Amen? Amen. 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 Men's Day is next Sunday. Yeah. It's also Father's Day. Yeah. And so we are in need of every male to volunteer to usher, greet, or sing in the Men's Day Choir. 
Directing our choir this year is Mr. Earl Duncan from the Fountain of Praise. So please go by the table, brothers, uh, in the corporate, on the corporate si uh, side, and sign up. Will you do that? Uh-uh. I just heard about three brothers. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. All right. We are celebrating some anniversaries today. Uh, Aaron and Marcella Boudreau, where are you? She, she, okay, they're celebrating 37 years. George and Mary Ann Grant, where are you? Stand up. Amen. They're celebrating 41 years. Richard and Rosalind Bell, where are you? Where are you? Richard and Rosalind, stand up. You gotta go get her, amen. They're celebrating 44 years. Amen. There is hope, there is hope, there is hope. Amen, amen. We have some special things going on today. Um, one of them is our children's honor roll. That is where we celebrate. We celebrate our children pre-K through fifth grade who have made A's and B's or all A's. So we're gonna start with the all A's. If you made all A's, I want you to stand up. Amen, amen. We are just so proud of them. And then if you are on the AB on a roll, we want you to stand up. Amen, amen. That is the future of this church. Amen? Amen, amen. And we have another special recognition, but we're going to be uh, blessed a little bit by the uh, voices of praise before we do that. <laughs> praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> you know, got to kind of remind them a little bit what we're doing, right? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got favor. Come on, it's a real simple song. Can you clap your hands with me? Come on. Here we go, VOP. Teach him a lesson. Say, over and over. He keeps on blessing. Now tell them say favor and I've got He keeps on blessing me Favor He keeps on blessing me I can't explain it It's so amazing It's not my goodness that I am blessed, and from the depths of my soul, I'm grateful. He keeps on blessing me. Come on, let me see you put your hands together. Say over. Come on, and and he keeps on blessing me. Over. That's it. Come on, he keeps on blessing me. Now tell them say favor and hey, I've got favor. That's it. Come on. He keeps on blessing me. Say it again. Favor. I've got favor. He keeps 
song blessing me. I can't explain it. Ah. It's so amazing. It's not my goodness. And from the depths of my soul. He keeps on blessed. Come on, let me see you put your hands together right there. I've got favor. I'll tell you, say that for me one time. He keeps on blessing. Come on, I'll tell you. I've got favor. Everybody sing that line for me. He keeps on blessing. Come on, any blessed people today? Come on. I've got favor. He keeps on blessing me. That's it. Come on. I've got favor. Oh, he keeps on blessing. That's it. Come on. I've got favor. Tennis says from one time. Tennis, come on. He keeps on. That's it, Tennis. Come on. I've got favor. Everybody sing that line for me. He keeps on blessing. recognizing all of our graduates. So we wanted to just make sure everyone had an opportunity to see them and to, so you'll know who you're praying for, amen? amen. So we're gonna ask Sister Ada Tasso to come. You have this green sheet, you can follow along with her, amen? amen. Good morning, Brentwood. As uh, was stated, you have this green sheet. And I know we have more high school graduates than this, but somehow June the 4th just came too quick. And they didn't find time to get it in. So I'm going to recognize them anyway, uh, because I'm not going to call the names of the high school graduates because they will be recognized on the third Sunday in September when they receive their scholarships and grants. So, if you are a 2017 high school graduate, would you come and stand in front of the pulpit? All high school graduates. All right, now these young people could not have accomplished this goal alone. So we'd like for the parents, the Mimi's, the Gigi's, the Sugars, the Honeys, everybody that got them to the, this point, would you please stand so that you could be recognized? Thank you. Now, 
when your scholarship application deadline comes, they adhere to that. So they won't be calling you up here if your name is not on the list. So adhere to the scholarship deadline. Thank you, you may take your seat. Now the college graduates are going to be called by name and we'd like for them to come to the front and stand in front of the pulpit. So in order to not waste time, we'd ask you to hold your applause, unless you just have to. <laughs> All right. Our first college graduate is Aziza Allen. She graduated from Ohio State University with a Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and Diplomacy. Aziza. Gabriel Armstead, University of Southern California, a Master's of Social Work and International Policy and Planning. Please come forward if you're here. Raven Hatton. Cameron University, Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. <laughs> Haley Hewitt, Louisiana State University, a Bachelor of Science in Accounting. Marcus Harper, Howard University, a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. Amber Lethbridge, Texas Women's University, a master's in business administration. Candace Mentor, University of Texas at Austin, Bachelor of Business Administration in Accounting. Alexis Sims, Morehouse School of Medicine, a master's of public health. <laughs> Celeste Davis, University of Oklahoma, Bachelor of Science in Industrial and Systems Engineering. Yi Yi Talaby, Houston Community College Honors Program, Associate Degree in Arts. <laughs> Tariq Tyler, Texas A&M University, Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Economics. And our last graduate is George White, Howard University, a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. I'd like for the parents of these young people to stand so that you may be recognized and thank you you may be seated goodness aren't we proud of our young people every year we see tremendous tremendous achievements on the part of our young people and as Mrs. Taz so indicated we will honor them again in September and I look forward to them making sure that their applications are complete uh, we had a tremendous fashion show, and this is my opportunity to thank Brentwood Church for a thousand plus people attending, a thousand plus people giving those dollars. We are postured to give away $80,000 this year uh, because of your support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We had another Eagle Scout. I was out the weekend. But the, another Eagle Scout was commissioned. Uh, I forgot the name. 
Is he here? His mom is here. <laughs> good, good, good. That's, that's, number, that's number 53, I think it is. And uh, let's give ourselves a big hand. Amen. 54. I was corrected. 54. I saw uh, uh, Brother Griffin was, was number 53. I saw him just a while ago up here. He's going to A&M. Where you at, Griff? Stand up. Yeah, yeah, he's going to A&M. Amen. Amen. We're so proud. We're so proud of all of these. Any other Eagle Scouts in the room? I know I knew that, those two. Any others? Okay. Uh-oh. Hey, hey. Well, Stevenson. Amen. Amen. Any other Eagle Scouts? We... I'm sorry, Mr. Mentor, Brother White. Who is that? That's White. Who is that? Give me your name. Watson. Hey. And who is that right there? Oh, Nick. Nick. Nick is down. Hey, hey, hey. It's going down, it's going down. All right, all right. Man, we got 53, 54 Eagle Scouts. That's, that's a tremendous record for our church. And let's give ourselves a big hand. I am so proud of those workers who work with our, our troops and we just cannot thank, thank them enough for the way that they continue each year to produce, produce, produce. Thank you so much. I want to look forward to this weekend for our MGM uh, conference. Uh, Dr. Thomas reminded you of that. Parents, we have some tables that have been sponsored for the, so we want to say that uh, the young men, we want them to be there. They've already, we've already got those tables paid for. And so, they, they mentioned something about some fee for the men, young men, young men, for the boys. They are, if, if you've got a young man, go by that table, and they, they already pay for it. But, but register them so that we can make sure that they can take advantage of the programs on this coming Saturday. Amen? Amen. We're looking at 400. Our goal is to have 400 people there. And with tremendous workshops, tremendous speaker uh, coming in and, and for the luncheon. And we're just excited. So Brother Oscar Telfair and Brother Carlton Hayes are working, working, working hard. And uh, it's going to be a class act program. So let's do that. Please, ma'am. Please, sir. All right. Last week, I introduced our summer intern. I'm going to have him stand again in case you weren't here. Brother Thomas Gardner, would you stand? And uh, he is... A senior getting ready to graduate down there at uh, the graduate school. He's a proud graduate of Prayer View a and m and And now he's graduating from Truett Seminary at Baylor University. Amen. And so we're excited to have him. And then his lovely wife joins us today. And uh, and Taylor, would you stand? That, 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 I, I want her, her to come. Amen. Yeah. So I wanted her to come today to make sure that y'all know. Uh-huh. She wanted, to, she wanted to chart her territory down here. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, that having been established, all right, we can move on. I want you all to give my dear friend, Sister Burke, where you at? Stand up. She leaves. She, she, she leaves this week to assume the position of the Dean of the Law School at the University of Oregon. 
the first black female. going to Portland, Oregon to assume duties on July 1. She's a bad sister. She's a bad sister. A sister. She presently serves at the University of Houston as associate dean, and we're so proud of her. And they've been calling me. I'll talk to you later, but they've been calling me some grads of, of that school to find out what kind of Negro you are. And, <laughs> and uh, and Morehouse men who finished that school, and I've been, you know, been telling you, telling them some good stuff. And uh, <laughs> but on no, serious note, we're so proud of you, and we're gonna we're gonna fly out there once you get settled. And uh, she's looking for a, a black church and a, a beauty shop. And <laughs> there we go. In Portland, in Portland. That's an assignment, that's an assignment. All right. Well, I stand real quickly to introduce to you our preacher for today. I am so excited to have Dr. Stephen Carter, who, amen. Someone asked what occasion this was. This is Stephen A. Carter uh, Day, and uh, Stephen uh, is a proud graduate of Morehouse and, and being of Duke University uh, School of Divinity. Uh, he pastors now at the Mount Eric Church, which is his home church in Brooklyn, and uh, is doing a stellar job there. And we are so proud of him. And we, you know him, and he comes every year at this Sunday. And I, uh, I, I, I was not supposed to be here today, but I wanted to, I came back late last night to make sure that, uh, I, th to be honest with you, I wanted to hear him preach. I haven't heard him preach in a while. And, but also I wanted to survey the land to make sure this 10 o'clock thing was still going good. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and I, I went to Sunday school, walked around to make sure everything was going good. And so far, so good, amen? Yeah. Amen. So after the choir, y'all gonna sing another song? Yeah. All right, after the choir sings, the next voice you will hear is that of the proud pastor and in his mind, the favorite son of Brentwood Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, favorite son. Bless the Lord. This song says an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Oh! 
together this morning he deserves an incredible praise hallelujah hallelujah now give him some praise because he's incredible eternal and gracious God Lord we come right now and just saying thank you you are truly an incredible God. Now God is preaching time. Bless me to preach your word. Father God, do whatever you must. So when all is said and done, you alone will get all the glory. We, your people, will be blessed. In the mighty and matchless, powerful name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people say amen. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. 
Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time and you know God didn't have to wake you up this morning, you ought to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to give God some praise because he's been good to me. I don't think they heard you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, somebody went to sleep last night and didn't wake up this morning, but God woke me up this morning and I come to give God some praise. Now, if nobody is talking to you, tap yourself and say, self, I don't need any help because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing and privilege it is to be back at Brentwood every year on the Stephen Carter Day. I like that. I tell preachers all the time, I let that when they talk about going to Brentwood to preach, I say, I know which Sunday you won't be there. <laughs> and so I'm super excited. Let's thank God for your pastor, my mentor, Dr. Joe Samuel Ratliff. Come on, we can do better than that. You ought to stand up and thank God for your pastor, Dr. Joe Samuel Ratliff. Wherever there's a painting, you know there's an artist. And wherever there's a building, you know there's an architect. Wherever there's a book, you know there's an author. Wherever there's a song, you know there's a composer. And wherever there's a great church, you know there's a great pastor. And so we thank God for Dr. Joe Samuel Ratliff. He continues to mentor me. He shares so much with me. And God has blessed our church. We have grown to over... Uh, 1,600 members, and we see about eight to nine on Sunday, and we thank God for that. And a lot of that is because I, I steal everything from here and take it back. Amen. And then so glad to see so many of you. And then to the intern, a uh, new friend and found brother, uh, Rep. Reverend Garner. We thank God for him. Had a chance to meet him a couple of months ago. And then to Reverend Joe Ford and Reverend Barbara and Reverend Lily Seals. And to each of you, I'm just happy uh, to be home. I didn't go to sleep last night. Amen. I'm so excited because I want to make sure I am here on today. Again, I brought the book back. It'll be selling it outside. You know, Resurrection from Rejection. I'm selling it every time I come. Amen. And so I'm asking you to please stop by and get it. Genesis, the 31st chapter. And I just want to lift one verse in your hearing. The 31st chapter beginning at one verse, the third verse. I want to preach a message on this day to, to the Brentwood Church. It'll be a blessing to pastor in this church. Then the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. Look at your neighbor, shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's time, time to elevate your attitude. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. As we gather here this morning for our weekly worship at Brentwood Baptist Church, we must make the decision that the only way the Lord can continue to bless both pastor and congregation is that there must be a continuation of using the collective minds of Brentwood to continue to show the world what happens when informed and consecrated brains are committed to keeping Christ the main attraction. The great philosopher Søren Kierkegaard says, we are all born to be brilliant creations. The only problem is that it's often sabotaged by average thinking. Therefore, we have to make the decision that whatever negative, unproductive, ungodly, and unhealthy attitudes that we have packed into our human existence, it's time that we elevate so that we will not eliminate the future blessings that God has in store for our lives. Cornel West says, our attitudes today are always a result of the social orientations of our past, but if we are not careful, we can allow painful memories to create painful futures. And get this, your past was not meant to last, but your past was your training class. Now the question is, will you pass or will you repeat your pass? No one can make the choice for you except you, no exception. It's not your mama, it's not your daddy, it's not your friend, it's not your coworkers, it's not the evil church member 
or anyone's fault for who you are. You are who you are because of who you are. And it all begins with a change in your attitude. Therefore, this morning, as we seek to move forward to higher heights as collective members of Brentwood, I want to share with you four principles on how you can help Pastor Ratliff and the Wood and make a change for the better, not just in church, but in your home, in your school, on your job, and even in your own minds. Therefore, there are some areas of your life that, through prayer, you must do in order to experience future blessings. Let's go to work. Here it goes. Number one, in order to be helpful to Brentwood, you must elevate your communication. The text says, opens up, the Lord said unto Jacob. We must be careful how we communicate. And the reason why I know this is true, because it's not until you trust God that you will be honest with God and will become available for God. Your life cannot be elevated unless you trust the God whom you are talking to. In the military, the person with the highest rank calls all the shots. In the gang life, the OG has the power and the influence. In the church, the senior pastor gives the vision. In the workforce, the president or CEO is in charge. And the reason is simple is because the one who has the highest authority in any context is the one who we are to obey. And the good news, Brentwood, is that no one has more authority over our lives than God. And when God is speaking to us, we are to do three things. Number one, listen to what he says. Number two, trust what he says. But most importantly, number three, obey what he says. And the problem for many of us is that we have been talking to too many of the wrong people and hearing too many of the wrong messages. And can I help someone out this morning? There are some people whom you have been talking to in church that if you want to have a productive future and be a productive member, you have to stop talking to them. Don't answer their calls. Don't reply to their emails. Don't respond to their text messages. Don't accept them on social media and don't give them access into your future. Some people you just have to let go on this level in order for God to get you to the next level and the reason why I'm telling you this is because whether you believe it or not God has greatness in store for your future God has blessings in store for your future God has opened doors in store for your future but in order for it to get to you you may have to leave some people alone go on and tap your neighbor and tell them if I don't answer your call this week you know why here it is, here it is. Jacob, who is the biblical minor star of this passage, had lived in Haran for a long time, and God wanted him to return to the land of Canaan. God planned to detach him from some people, develop him in the midst of other people, in order to display him before all people. In other words, Jacob's time for where he was had come to an end, and likewise, some of us have been in some places too long, and God said it's time for change. Some of us have been in some places Places, some conditions, some apartments, some beds, some clubs, some environments, and some circumstances too long. And God is saying it's time for you to move on today. But what I love about this is that God is not just telling Jacob to move on to just any old place, but God is speaking to him and giving him communication to let him know that where I'm sending you is better than where you are right now. And can I help someone out this morning? Whenever God tells you that it's time to move, you can trust that wherever he is telling you to to go is way better than where you are right now. Jacob was able to hear this because he was in communication with the Lord. And the problem with too many of us is that we only talk to the Lord when we are in trouble, when bills are due, when we are sick, when we are frustrated, when we are confused, and when we are stuck in a bad situation. But because Jacob was constantly in communication with the Lord, when it came time for God to elevate Jacob to the next level, all he had to do was continue talking to the Lord. And someone this morning can testify that you need to communicate with God who can help you and not people who can hurt you. Quit talking to your friends about your problems. They can't solve them. The most they can do is gossip about them. Quit talking to your girls about how bad someone is. The most they uh, can do is wait for you to kick them to the curb and try to pick them up. Quit talking to negative, pessimistic people about your positive potential because they will drain your energy steal your joy, eliminate your excitement, and drag you down into a miserable life with them because as the saying goes, misery loves company. So decide today that you are either changing your conversation or enhancing your conversation with the Lord. And I know I have a witness in the building today who can testify when you talk to the Lord, the Lord will talk back to you. 
Am I talking to anyone who's been living long enough to have a time where you had to talk to the Lord? You couldn't call your pastor. You couldn't call your deacon. You couldn't call your mother. But you got down on your knees and you had a little talk with the Lord. And the Lord showed up and answered your prayers. Do I have anyone who's ever prayed and God answered your prayers? And the only reason you sitting here this morning is not because you're so educated. Not because you're so smart not because you so degreed but the only way you're sitting here is because a grandmother a pastor a aunt a uncle somebody prayed for you and had you on their mind go on and tell your neighbor i'm glad somebody prayed for me but secondly secondly in order to be helpful to brentwood you must change your direction look what it says he says return unto the lord as brentwood continues to progress towards greater greatness you must know that God will always lead you towards your purpose by giving you challenges to serve as your preparation that will ultimately get you through your pain. In other words, whatever you've been through was not a mistake. It was meant to prepare you to deal with future pains. It was providentially prescriptive to serve a purposeful process that will lead you to your powerful promise. I don't know about you, but I don't want to hang around anyone who hasn't been through something. I need someone who has shed some tears, can show some scars, have some wounds, and can let me know that the same God who brought them through is the same God who will bring me through. However, sometimes God will use our pains of today to serve as someone else's hope for tomorrow. But unless your attitude is right, you will always ask, why me, Lord, instead of use me, Lord? This is what happened with Jacob in our text. God was sending him back to Canaan. But he used Iran to prepare him to go back home. Canaan was the land that was flown with milk and honey. Canaan was the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Canaan was the land where Jacob would find his purpose. But Canaan was also 500 miles away from where he was in Haram. In other words, the journey from where he was to where God was sending him was a long way. Jacob did not have public transportation. He didn't have Uber to call on his phone. He didn't have a car to jump in and ride. Jacob had his two feet and just walked 500 miles, and it was not going to be an easy journey. And can I help someone this morning? Quit expecting your blessings from God for you and Brentwood to be overnight, immediate, right away, and sudden. There are some blessings that God cannot give you right now because if he gave it to you right now, you would jack the whole thing up. Therefore, God has to sometime place us on a journey that will allow us to learn some lessons on the way so when we get to where he wants us to be, we will already become ready for the place where we have been directed to go. I like that. But not only this, the journey was rough because he had to deal with people and dealing with people is no easy task. Not only this, he was dealing with religious people, or to put another way, he was dealing with and leading church people. And you do know that because church people can sometimes be the messiest people. Some people are moody, some people are shady, some people are stubborn, some people are nasty, some people are trifling, some people are corrupt, and some people are all of the above. And if you have not said amen yet, you are the one I'm talking about. Therefore, in order to get where God has you to be, you are going to have to take a journey that is not going to be easy. But let me also add, if you think that following Jesus is easy, you have been reading the wrong Bible. The Word of God says a man that is born of a woman is but a few days and they're full of trouble. And Whether you like it or not, trouble is going to come your way. Someone can testify it will show up in your home. It will show up on your job. It will show up in your children. And it will even show up in church. Sometimes, as I said before, the biggest church tr troublemakers are in church. Satan was the chief musician and he was a troublemaker. The Pharisees were schooled in religion and they were troublemakers. Being a Christian on your way to your purpose will not eliminate you from troubles. It will just give you the strength to make it through your troubles. And the reason why everyone in here ought to be shouting, screaming, hollering, and giving God some praise is because you don't look like what you've been through. Go on and tell your neighbor, I'm still here. 
As a matter of fact, I've been through some stuff. I should have been dead. I should have been sick. I should have lost my job. I should be in a crazy house. I should be on drugs. I should have had an overdose. But in spite of it all, God's grace and mercy brought me through. And I don't look like what I've been through. Go on and look at your neighbor and say, you can't tell. But God has brought me through enough. But not only this, attitude is important because if Jacob had the wrong attitude, he would have been complaining to God about the distance instead of focusing on the destination. If your mind focuses on the process, you may run the risk of missing the promise. People who don't have nothing to show in their lives usually don't have nothing worth showing in their heads. Their conversations are always superficial and filled with fluff instead of purpose. People who talk about people are just people who don't have anything else to talk about. People who complain about where they are are just people who have never really been going anywhere. People who expect God to do everything and they don't want to, to, to do anything are usually people with end up, who end up with nothing. My brother and sister, God has something for you, but you will not get it until God gets something from you. Like Jacob, you have to say, I don't care how long the journey is, I'm going to walk it out. Go on and tell your neighbor, walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. You got to walk out of depression, walk out of low self-esteem, walk out of excuses, walk out of drugs, walk out of childishness, walk out of wickedness, walk out of lying, walk out of no good friendship, walk out of gossiping, walk out of complaining, walk out of negativity. And when you walk out, you ought to walk up in the house of the Lord and lift up your hands, open up your mouth and let somebody know the Lord has been good. But not only this, number three, in order to be helpful to Brentwood, you must reevaluate your association. Look what it says. Going back to thy fathers and thy kindreds. I like this. God tells Jacob to go back to your father and your kinfolk. Now, if you know, like I know, sometimes there are some family members you left in the past that you don't ever want to see in the future. But this is what I learned about God. He will sometimes use your past to bring you in the face of your haters to show you that you can overcome your fears. Now, the reason why I know this is powerful is because God was telling Jacob to go back to his kinfolk, and one of his kinfolk was Esau, who tried to kill him. But the reason why I like this is because God will sometimes return you in the presence of people who tried to kill you just to show them that you are still alive and what they meant for evil, God has used for your good. I see y'all didn't get that. Let me say that again. That sometimes God will take you back in the face of people who tried to take you out just to show them that you are still alive to let them know that what you meant for evil, God will use for your good. I don't know about you, but we all have some people who we just want to look at and tell them how you like me now. Started from the bottom, now I'm here. You tried to hurt me in 2001, but I'm still here giving God the praise in 2017. I'm still here and some of you can testify that when you look back over your life there are some people you can testify you tried to kill me you tried to ruin me you tried to hurt me you tried to get me fired you tried to steal my money you tried to lower my esteem you tried to keep me from going to college you tried to tear me down you tried to tell me what I was not but in spite of what you tried to tell me I couldn't do God reminded me that I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I'm still here. Do I have about 10 people up in Brentwood this morning can testify? I'm shouting because I'm still here. But get this, Jacob still had to have the right attitude because had he returned to his kinfolk with the wrong attitude, he would have acted in a way that would have caused him to miss his blessing. And what I believe is that before God allowed Jacob to see some of the people from the past who tried to do him wrong, God had to first get Jacob right so that he would not mess up. And can I help someone? They, there are some people, if you're telling the truth, who you just wish you can see again so you can tell them some words. I know you saved, sanctified. But there are some people who you wish you can see right now because you got some words to tell them and it's not from the book. But God knows that you are not mature or spiritual enough to see them and sometimes God will postpone your reconnection so that he can develop you in the process. But not only this, God will sometimes lead you to return to dangerous 
places. Look at this. The fact that Esau tried to kill him before, he was not sure that Esau would not try to kill him again. So the only assurance that he had was that he had to believe that if God is sending him, then surely God will protect him. I want you to know today, God will never send you someplace where he cannot protect you. And the good news is that there is not a place where the omnipresent God cannot watch over you. If he watch over the birds of the air, surely he can watch over you. If he can turn water into wine, surely he can turn your situation around. If he can, give, if he can raise the dead, give sight to the blind, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, stop the winds, surely he is able to protect you from people. And so he tells Jacob, go back to the place where you are afraid of the people and watch me protect you. And that's my word for someone here this morning, don't be afraid to go where you are afraid to go, but go where you are afraid to go knowing that the one who is going with you is not afraid of anything or anyone. Keep on supporting your pastor as he seeks to win the sinners and develop the saints. Keep on standing with your pastor as he, as he speaks truth to power. And I come from Brooklyn, New York to let somebody know that some things that you were afraid of last year as members of Brentwood, God is going to release you from those fears. And in the words of a popular phrase, you haven't seen anything yet. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he has given you a sound mind. Know that no way weapons formed against you shall prosper. If God sends you, God will keep you. Therefore, you need to tell the devil, if you didn't want me to become the best, you should have never let me meet Christ because since I met Christ and hearing the proclaimer of the gospel messages of hope, healing, and hope, I'm determined to no longer walk in fear, but I will walk in places where you said I could not walk. As a matter of fact, God told his child, every place your feet touch, I will be bless. And you need to know that if you're a child of God, wherever you walk, it's blessed. When you walk in the schools, it's blessed. When you walk on your job, it's blessed. When you walk in the church, it's blessed. When you walk in the hospital, it's blessed. When you walk on the streets, it's blessed. In other words, whenever you are a child of God, wherever you walk, it's blessed. And do I have anyone here today who just know you are blessed and you are carrying blessings with you? Go on and tap your neighbor and tell them you are sitting next to a blessed person. If you don't believe me, just give me some room and watch me magnify God's name. As a matter of fact, if God has never healed your body, if God has never put food on your table, if God has never got you out of a bad situation, if God has never opened a door for you, then you can go ahead and sit there with your arms crossed and your legs folded. But if the Lord has done anything for you, if God has made a way for you, if God has opened a door for you, then I dare you to give God a magnified because he's good. But can I give something else? Quit hanging out with cursed people and begin hanging out with blessed people because blessed people have blessings that overflow and if you are close enough, some of it will fall on you. That's Bible. The truth is the only reason why some of us have what we have is because we were close to people who were blessed by the almighty God. And when God blessed them, they blessed us. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm the recipient of blessings from Brentwood and Dr. Joe Samuel Ratliff that God has blessed y'all and as a consequence, the blessings have overflowed on me. I'm a witness, you ought to hang out with blessed people. You will not have a blessed life if you only hang around cursed people. One person said it like this, I used to think that the devil was not real, but then I met church folk. <laughs> and just in case you don't know who cursed people are, these are those who always say what they can't do instead of what they can do. They say stuff like, I can't face the public because I'm scared. I can't tithe income because it's too much. I can't let go of my bad habits because they feel too good. I can't break a destructive relationship because I've been in it too long. I can't squash fatal attractions because the temptation is too great. I can't stop smoking. I can't quit drinking. I can't go back to school because I'm too old. I can't get off drugs and alcohol because I'm an addict. I can't pass my class. I can't go to work every day on time. I can't support the pastor because I've been here longer than him or her. 
I can't take all the hostility on my job. I can't manage my stress. I can't go to church every Sunday. I can't, I can't control my temper. I can't get over my grief. I can't get through my pain. I can't control my tongue. I can't get happy. I can't have joy. I can't live within my means. I can't do what's expected of me. I can't communicate with my children. I can't participate in the community. I can't stop gossiping. I can't quit lying. I can't find time to work in ministry. 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 I can't get over my disappointment. I can't rise above my handicaps. I can't appreciate my enemies. I can't stand certain Negroes. I can't overcome my calamities. I can't face my fears. I can't deal with my challenges. I can't clap my hands. I can't thank God. I can't say amen at the 10 a.m. service. I can't get happy in church. And as a consequence, you can't think about how God has been good to you. And you focus so much on what you can't do that you can't see how far the Lord has brought you from. But I wonder, do I have about 50 to 70 or 100 people who can say, I may not be what I ought to be, but I thank God I'm not what I used to be. Do I have any used to be people on here? Do I have any used to be people on here? Go on and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I used to be something that I can't talk about, but I can just thank God that I'm not what I used to be. Here it goes, number four, I'm out of here. In order to be helpful to Brentwood, you must activate your dedication. I like this. Look what it says, and I will bless you. I love this. Look at what God does for Jacob. He gives him assurance that encouraged him to be engaged, knowing that he would be delivered. Therefore, as a result of Jacob's belief in God, he dedicated himself to doing what he said in ministry. And the reason this is important because dedication leads to consecration. And consecration leads to separation. And separation leads to your elevation. The dilemma is that too many of us are dedicated, but we are dedicated to things and people who are not dedicated to God. Jacob says, since God has been dedicated to me, I'm going to do my best to remain dedicated to God. Look at how the story unfolds. Jacob went in faith knowing that in the end, God was going to work it out. And this upcoming year with your pastor and Brookwood family, you need to go in faith towards your future knowing that God is going to work things out. As a matter of fact, God has already worked it out. But as one theologian says, he's just waiting for you to catch up to what he has already worked out. Songwriter says, Jesus can work it out if you let him. Look at what the Lord says to Jacob. He says, I will be with you. One theologian argues that these are the greatest and sweetest words that one could ever hear from the eternal God. He says, I will be with you. He never said you won't have struggles, you won't have pains, you won't have trials, you won't have crazy members, you won't have people gossiping, you won't feel like giving up, you won't have tears. He fleshed out the biblical meaning of Emmanuel, God with us, and gave providential promise by saying, I will be with you. And the truth of the matter is that Brentwood, all I come to tell you on this second Sunday of June, which is the Stephen Carter Day, is that God will be with you. Go and tell your neighbor, he will be with you. I don't know what you have to face. I, face, I just know that God will be with you. Emmanuel Kant says the promise of God's presence is compensation for man's fear. God is saying, I know you're scared, but hold tight because I'm with you. I have your back. I'm in your corner. I'm closer to you than you think. I'm watching over you. I got my eyes on you and my hands on you. I'm in control. Just know that all you have to do is obey my voice. And I don't know about you, but when you know God is with you, it gives you holy boldness to walk in the situations that your fears would have kept you out of. When God is with you, you are able to rise above your resistance, soar above your setback, worship against your worries, fight against your fears, praise in spite of your pain, leap in spite of labor, shout in spite of sin, sing in spite of your sorrow, dance in spite of your danger, because when you are a child of the king, Donald Trump can't stop you, Ben Carson can't control you, racism can't destroy you, hateration can't eliminate you, naysayers can't defeat you, 
you. Sexism can't hide you. Poor communities can't define you. Your past can't destroy you because when you are a child of the king, you had the word of God who created you, the Christ who died for you, the Holy Spirit who comforts you, the church who informs you, the Bible that guides you, the saints who pray for you, and the angels watching over you. And when you're a child of God, you can walk into the unknown, run into the waters, leap into your laughter, and triumph over your child. And I know there's someone here today who knows without a shadow of a doubt, God has been with me. Well, if you know God is with you, if you know God has kept you, if you know God has protected you, if you know God is watching over you, then you ought to show some signs. Quit sitting there acting as if you deserve your blessings. You deserve your mercies. You deserve your salvation. And think about what you could have been, what you should have been, or where you could have been. But God stepped in your life and worked things out. Do I have anyone here this morning who can testify? Oh, God has been good to me. You ought to tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you want to know what a blessing look like, look at me. If you want to know what healing look like, look at me. If you want to know what a miracle look like, look at me. If you want to know what deliverance look like, look at me. That's why when I come to church, I don't come to be entertained or transformed. I don't come to hear the latest gossip. I don't come to sit back and stick up my runny nose in the air, but I come to lift up my hands and tell God, thank you. I don't come to church to create burdens, but I come to church to lay my burdens down. And I think I need to pause and just ask this morning, do I have any thankful people in the house? Thank God for never leaving you. Thank God for always directing you. Thank God for keeping you in your right mind. Thank God for lifting his hands on you. And if you know like I know and feel like I feel, then help me tell somebody you ought to go ahead and thank God. Because when the thankful people give thanks to the thanksgiving God, the thanksgiving God will keep on giving the thankful people blessings to be thankful for. Y'all just missed that. That when you are thankful and you thank God, God will keep on giving you something to be thankful for. Well, if you're still sitting there, I guess you're not thankful. That when you are thankful for the blessings that God has given you, then God will keep on giving you something to be thankful for. Goodbye, church. Church, may God bless you real good. But since he's been blessing you, you ought to keep on inviting people to church. And every time they show up, just remind them how good the Lord has been. You invite people to see movies like Get Out, The Fate and the Furious, Chris Rock Comedy Show, and so much more. But on your way out of church today, as a matter of fact, before you run out to the parking lot, before you get home, you ought to take off your phone and text somebody and let somebody know the Lord has been good to me. As a matter of fact, don't even wait till you leave. But go on and grab your neighbor, shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I forgot to tell you when I sat down, but the Lord has been good to me. Oh, come on, they didn't hear you. Turn to somebody behind you and say the Lord has been good to me. Has God been good to anybody here? Do I have any thankful people here? The Lord has been good to me. I got to leave you. May God bless you real good. But in December, I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital uh, to deal with some intestinal issues from birth. And the pain was so bad, I walked in the hospital and I lay on the bed. I said, I need to see a doctor. And they said, sir, you can't lay on the bed. I said, I'm laying on this bed. I'm in so much pain. And they took x-rays and they discovered that I had poison in my body that they had to get out. They admitted me into the hospital. Dr. Ratliff and the whole team and others called me day in and day out to check on me. And I stayed there for a couple of days. They gave me morphine. And they gave me more morphine. And they gave me more morphine <laughs> to take away the pain. And around three days later, they, they came back and said, we're going to let you out in a few days. I said, all right. And around the sixth day, they came and said, the doctor who was a comedian, he said, we're going to release you today. He said, but when you get out, he said, when you run into some other sick people, tell them about your doctor who healed you. And Garner, when I got home, I began to think about that. I said, if I can tell other people about a human doctor who healed me, 
then every time I get a chance, I ought to tell somebody else about a divine doctor who saved my soul. Do I have a witness in the building today? Go on and grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know a lot, but I want to tell you about my doctor. He's a doctor in a sick room. He's a lawyer in a courtroom. He's a mother for the motherless. He's a friend for the friendless. Have I got a witness? Is there anybody here knows that God is real? Then why don't you help me this morning? Go on and grab your neighbor. Shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I got a feeling that everything gonna be all right. So don't you wait until it's all right, but go ahead uh, and give God some praise. Am I talking to anybody? Why don't you grab somebody else and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I know that the Lord will make a way. Shout, yeah, oh yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say, neighbor, is there anybody here who don't mind lifting up your hands, giving God the praise? Because the more you praise him, the more he'll bless you. Is there anybody here who can think about how far the Lord has brought you through? You got to praise him. Take somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, is there anybody here who can just think about the tears he tried, the problems he solved, and the reason why I shout is because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Shout, neighbor. I got a feeling uh, that the Lord is going to bless me uh, and I'm not going to wait uh, until I leave church uh, but I'm going to thank him uh, right now shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah shout neighbor is there anybody here who can testify that if it had not been uh, for the Lord on my side uh, I wouldn't be here. Yeah! 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 Praise him! Praise him! Praise him! Yeah!
Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Carter. Let's give the Lord praise for the word today. I'm glad I came home. Oh, my God, my God. What a word. Praise him, go ahead and praise him. Nothing better than knowing Jesus. somebody here today having heard that word maybe through a song maybe through the energy given by the person sitting next to you you don't know him you've heard of him maybe you've been coming to church maybe you've been a member of a church and maybe one of those church people he was talking about angered you and you left the fellowship maybe a pastor like me did something to offend you and you're out of the fellowship maybe you've been in Brentwood and you left and now God is calling you back you need to be in somebody's church Maybe you're homeless today. You don't have a church home. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God wants you to get to know him, get to know him. To seek him is an adventure, but to know him is an achievement. If you're here today and you don't know him, nothing better, nothing better.
for you. Yeah. I want you to be invasive now. If you're sitting near somebody who you don't know, who you don't know, I want you to turn to them and ask them, is Pastor talking to you? I don't, I don't want this to be frivolous. I don't want you to talk to somebody who you know who you came to church with. But if you're sitting near somebody that you don't know, ask them, do they have a church home? Ask them, do they know Christ? If they say no to any of those questions, witness to them and invite them to come. I wouldn't sit through this not knowing Christ, not having a church home. We're talking about your future, your fate. You ought to know him. You ought to know him. You can walk with him. Walk with him. I can't go down there for you, but I can walk with you. there's still somebody who needs to come. Is that you? Is that you? Oh, we've got two beautiful people here today. But there's still somebody. You need Jesus. I don't know how people make it who don't have Jesus in their lives. I mean, those of us who got it have a hard enough time as it is. But if you're sitting here today and your stuff is raggedy, you need to come to Jesus today. Oh, my God. Harden not your heart. Hear me, church. Oh, it's a beautiful sight today to see you. But if you're sitting here today, oh, boy. Where are you? Who are you? We're not trying to embarrass you. We're talking about your soul. If you die today, yeah, you, you'll go to hell. Am I trying to scare you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Where are you? Where are you? Man, woman, boy, or girl. Don't have a church home. Don't know Jesus. Where are you? Come on, come on, come on. Choir, choir, come on, come on. Sing. Just knowing Jesus. One more time. And we're going to go. Get ready to go. Get ready to go. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're going to be out here in a minute. Nothing better. Nothing better. Give us your name. Reverend Gershom Rosario. Yes, Brother Rosario was at Brentwood. He says, I've come back. The Lord has led me to come back to Brentwood. Amen. God bless you. 
God bless you. And this beautiful young lady, uh, I did her wedding some time ago. And she comes to join us today. Give us your name. Melody Tasso. Sister Tasso, God bless you. And that's a little, tell us his name. Roland Tasso. Roland Tasso. All right. Let's give it up. I want you two to go with, uh, yeah. Bill, Bill. De Deacon Bill over there, okay? All right, all right. Boy, these children's honor roll people. You straight A people and you A and B people. Y'all come, 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 come. A and B, they, want to, they, they got something for y'all, some certificates and some refreshments. Um, I want y'all to come and follow. Come this way. Okay. Okay, you follow them. Come this way, Bubba. Bubba? Go. <laughs> there you go. Which way y'all gonna take them? Which way y'all gonna take them? All right, go that way. All right, go that way, Bubba. <laughs> All right, that's straight A. Straight A, A and B. Give it up, give it up. All right. They got some refreshments, certificates, gifts. That's all right. They're my smart peoples. Come on, Bubbles. Get in line, Bubbles. Oh. That's all right. That's all right. All right. Thank you all for coming. Next week is the men's and boys' Saturday, and then Sunday is Father's Day, and I'll be preaching, and I'll look for you 10 o'clock. Sunday school, 8.30, prayer meeting at 7.45. Let's stand. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we claim rich blessings for the people of God. Bless us. Let everything our hands touch prosper. Amen. Have a good week. book over there to your right Carter's book to the right